and then the last one I'll select a region here is this send image j command which is probably only going to be very meaningful to you if you happen to already know how to use image j but you can send a region to image j and then we'll extract it from qpath and open it as an image in image j which is quite useful given the fact that image j doesn't support whole slide images by default they're, they're just too large and so being able to send a region to image j can help especially if you want to create your own kind of customized way of detecting something so let's suppose that i select a region here and i didn't have a better way to detect these i can send the region to image j i can choose how much i want to scale the image down and so if i choose one it's going to send it the full resolution and it's still probably going to be way too big so i'll scale it down by a factor of 10. whenever the image is sent to image j all the properties are set accordingly to do with the scaling and that means that potentially please ignore this if you're not familiar with image j because it's not something that you necessarily need to know about to be able to work with qpath i can run image j commands and create selections and then i can even send them back to qpath and so i send at one resolution i do whatever processing i want within image j and then I can send back the region that I've created to QPath as a new annotation based upon the processing that I performed within image J and all of the rescaling, the shifting, resizing and everything will happen automatically. And so it can un unlock a lot of extra abilities to do things within QPath if you combine it with the, the tools of image J. And another reason why you might want to combine it with image J is simply from the point of view of creating figures. So you might well use image j commands to be able to save your your image in different file formats and so on okay so that has taken us through the entire toolbar and what i would like to do now is um probably stop this video and then come back for a later video where we begin to look at things like cell detection and starting to train classifiers within qpath as well